This is what we know, this is what we read about the rapture, is that, that someday that Jesus is going to return and not everybody's going to face death. Not everybody in history is going to die. There's going to be a whole generation of Christians that are going to be captured up in the air. And it's a glorious time. It's called the glorious appearing. And there's a lot of Christians that are understandably fired up about it. When I used to drive my kids to school, I always ended up behind this guy day after day, and his bumper sticker said, well, some of you might even have this bumper sticker, so I'm embarrassed to tell you this, but anyway, his bumper sticker read, in case of rapture, this vehicle will be unmanned. Well, half the mornings it looked unmanned anyway. He's swerving all over the, the street there, drinking his coffee and talking on his cell phone. But what, what people believe is that, that when the rapture happens, all of a sudden all those Christians in those vehicles are going to be gone from their cars. And so the cars are just going to, you know, crash into each other. How about the pilots f flying the plane? Oh, those are going to be fun, eh? You want to make sure you've got a Muslim flying your plane, right? <laughs> Don't want any Christian flying my planes. <laughs> Whose hands do you want to be in there? This is kind of thought-provoking, isn't it? And so there's, there's this belief, this deep-held belief, that Jesus is going to return because the Bible says and it's going to take us out of, out of this earth and we're going to avoid this whole tribulation thing. There was a great story I read. i got to tell you this one because this one's fantastic. There was this guy down in, in Texas. His name was Herbert Washington. And he was one of these guys that's just fired up about the rapture. And he worked on a factory floor in Austin, Texas. And every day he shared the gospel. And to his credit, he shared the gospel with his coworkers. And he told them, you've got to get right. You've got to repent of your sin. You've got to get your life right. Because one of these days, Jesus is going to return and you're not going to be ready. And we're going to be raptured out of here and you'll be left behind. Well, one day, the entire factory floor decided to play a little joke on him. And when he went to the washroom one day, all of them took off their overalls and their boots and their hard hats and just <laughs> right at their workstations, just left them right on the ground. All except for a Pakistani Muslim that worked on the floor. And so when he came out of the washroom, there were all the hats and the boots and the overalls, all where the guys worked. He starts screaming and looks at the Muslim and says, what happened? He says, oh, they were all here one moment, and the next moment they are gone. And <laughs> anyway, it's, that sounds like a fantastic joke, doesn't it? I mean, that's something I would do <laughs> to our staff. <laughs> but this is what happened to poor Herbert. Because he was pretty fired up about the rapture, and here he was, he thought he missed it. The poor guy had a heart attack. This is a true story. The poor guy had a heart attack and fell to the ground right there, and the ambulance had to come. And you know what they say, it's always funny until someone loses an eye kind of thing, you know? And so anyway, people are believing that they're, the vast majority of the church in the last hundred years has taught that when Jesus comes for his church, he's going to do it just before the tribulation, and that's going to kick off the tribulation. And that's a wonderful sentiment, except it's not true. And I know some of you are going, what? What do you mean it's not true? Well, it, I believe that. I just want you to know that I believe for many years that there would be what they call a pre-trib rapture. I was taught that as I was growing up in the church when I was first a young pastor. I used to preach that. And then I made the mistake of actually reading the scriptures. And when I read the scriptures and I studied this out for my own, I realized there's no case for a tree pre-tribulation rapture. Biblically, it does not exist. It's of the most obscure passages. And really, it's not biblically, is not the reason why people believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. They believe in it because who wants to go through the tribulation, right? I think I'm going in a pre-tribulation rapture. Well, that's nice. And one of the reasons people sort of cite for this is, is this conclusion. It's more of a sentiment than a biblical mandate. They say this, I just don't believe that God would allow his children to suffer. Well, apparently, they don't know much about history. <laughs> apparently, they don't mu know much about even the world in which we live in. Go tell that to the Christians living right now in Yemen and in Afghanistan and in Indonesia and in Somalia and in Saudi Arabia. The list goes on and on and on. The level of persecution that's going on in the world amongst Christians right now is unprecedented. There is more persecution right now in the world than any other time in history. All you have to do is go pick up a magazine, Voice of the Martyrs, or go on their website and go find out what's really going on in this world. Don't tell me that God won't allow his children to suffer. They haven't read their Bible and they don't know anything about history. 
You all remember what happened in Rwanda with the genocide. We know that the, the, the Hutus killed approximately a million Tutsis. But what most people don't know is that the vast majority of those Tutsis were Christians. Did you know that? And they, they lost their lives as Christians. And you say, don't, don't, don't tell me that God wouldn't allow his children to suffer. We have well in excess of a half a million of those people were Christians. And do you know where many of them died? In their churches Sunday morning. Because they were sitting ducks and the Hutus would come into their churches and slaughter the entire congregation. There was one denomination alone that lost 280 of their pastors who were murdered right in their pulpits. Don't tell me that there's no suffering going on amongst Christians. You look at the, the New Testament. Go read the book of Acts. Did you see any suffering going on there? For 300 years, the church was, suffered. They were thrown to the lions. They were burned at the stake. They were crucified. They were cut into pieces. Don't tell me that the church won't suffer. The church will suffer. Out of the 12 disciples, take a stab at it. How many of you do you think died martyr's death? 11 of the 12. 11 of the 12. The only one that died a natural death was John. And the only reason he was still around is because his time wasn't yet up because he had to write the book of Revelation. And so God said, hey, buddy, they're trying to kill you. I know, but I'm going to preserve you here because we know you have a job to do. And that's what you need to remember, that your time is ultimately in God's hands. And it doesn't matter what happens in the world. I know some of you are sitting here and going, Pastor Mark, you're scaring me. That's my intent. <laughs> you say, are you sure, or, Pastor Mark, are you sure that you know when the rapture is going to happen? Actually, I'm pretty sure. Do you want me to show it to you? It's in the scripture. You want me to read it to you? Okay, you talked me into it. <laughs> I want you to just go down a few verses. It's right here in Matthew chapter 24. You, make, you come to your own conclusion on this. Matthew chapter 24, we'll look at verse 29. It says this, listen to carefully. It says, immediately after the tribulation. Humor me. Say after the tribulation. After the tribulation. I may be setting you up here, right? Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Say trumpet. trumpet. Where did I hear that before? With the sound of a great trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Well, I don't know about you people, but that sounds suspiciously to me like the rapture. It says that the Son of God will appear in the heavens and he will gather his elect from one end of heaven to the other. And it tells us exactly, exactly, exactly when it's going to happen. He says immediately after the tribulation. I know some of you say, Pastor Mark, I don't like this. I don't like it either. I didn't write the book. I'm just reading it to you. You say, yeah, but Pastor Mark, Pastor Mark, what if you're wrong? Well, if I'm wrong, then that means we're all in heaven together and I'll be the first one to apologize. <laughs> hey, you guys, remember that sermon I preached? <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> Was wrong. And you'll have to forgive me because we'll be in heaven. <laughs> the way I look at it, this, I, I'm in a no-lose situation here. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm either going to be proved right or wrong, but if I'm proved wrong, I'm in heaven and you have to forgive me and you're going to love me in heaven, even if you don't know. That's what's going to happen. But what if those who are preaching a pre-tribulation rapture, what if they're wrong? Then they have successfully ill-prepared an entire generation for the most critical and difficult time of all human history.